hello. Um, part one of my video verdict where Norwich City have lost here 2-0, home to Burnley. <sighs> so yeah, 2-0. Um, Norwich won on sendings offs. That's good news. Um, both in the first half. I think it was 2015, the last time a Premier League side went down to nine men in the first half. It's actually remarkably recent. I would have thought it would have been a lot um, odd on that. I, I might have even misheard that stat, I don't know. It was quite a bewildering day, really. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of facets of what Norwich did with nine men and, and before, well, don't shoot me, wasn't so bad. It was quite well disciplined but they just are incapable of, <laughs> of putting something together that that um, that would result in something positive to take from it. Uh, oh, it's been a long season and I'm really struggling. I'm, I think I'm gonna struggle for the next, uh, the next five minutes, so don't expect it to be long, but um, Emmy sending off, I mean, in my opinion, you can't, you can't make that move with your elbow, in, especially in the Premier League where you've got VAR, because as soon as people are watching that back, there is no other decision to make other than, well, you're going to get a red card. So, um, and then Josip Drummich's tackle looked horrendous in real time. It was right in front of the Burnley dugout and that was pretty. That was a pretty chippy place to, <laughs> to be all game. Uh, I, I think Kevin Friend had his red card out long before he got anywhere near the scene. Um, and fair enough, in actual fact, the tackle didn't look quite as bad in, in slow motion, I thought. It actually looked worse in real time but it's sort of the action of jumping into it. I don't think it was malicious. He may have been frustrated, but I, I got the impression he just kind of lost control of it hideously and, and then ended up with, with that. Um, that was just before half time. It was still nil nil. Norwich going down to nine men. And then we have um, from that very free kick, uh, Chris Wood putting in a, uh, an overhead kick off his shin, <laughs> uh, which Tim Krull, who was outstanding by the way for most of the game, um, couldn't, couldn't keep out. Uh, which was disappointing. Um, and just on Emmy's red card, it's fair to say that um, Ashley Westwood uh, knows how to make himself uh, uh, a villain and, and knew how to wound, wind up Emmy. And, and that is what Burnley are. And actually, speaking to Daniel Farker afterwards, he kind of admired it because it's you know it's what you should be. You should know how to wind your teams up and know how to put your uh, foot down and know how. I know how to take charge and, and do the little things that give you an advantage. And curious, Norwich are, have always proven able to do that in the championship, but very rare they've got anywhere near it in the Premier League. And it's it's difficult to work out why that is. I mean, it could just be a quality thing, but is it an attitude thing? I don't know. Is it some deep underlying weakness they have? Um, so Norwich went all down at half time. I mean, goodness knows. And, and I don't even think anyone really gave an answer in terms of what actually happened in the... <laughs> Uh, as in, what do you tell a team with nine men um, to go and do in the second half? It, they got the ball and they couldn't really go anywhere with it, so you couldn't play it long. So, I mean, they did all right with nine men. I mean, they basically, they only conceded through one of the most ridiculous own goals I've I've seen from Beg Godfrey. And uh, what I will say is fair play to him for how he reacted to it, uh, both at the moment, in the very moment, but also after that. And Ben was as good as anyone on the pitch, really. Um, he didn't deserve that. And if you're going to tell me that he's a bad player because he couldn't control a cross that came in, or he's got some issue mentality-wise, I'm not going to listen. I think it's just just one of those things and, and symptomatic of just how things have kind of fallen apart around Norwich, that it should happen to someone like Ben, like that uh, today in those circumstances. Um, and, and to be honest, I, I didn't actually see it in real time because I, was, I, I didn't think there was any danger when I had my head in the laptop for a moment um so yeah just uh, just completely galling um interesting daniel Farker did say how angry the players were at half time at the two red cards so it obviously wasn't lost on them just the lack of discipline and the, the hole that those two moments put norwich in for the rest of the game um and of course the added issue was that tim closer came off with a hamstring issue at half time and Christoph Zimmerman, who was surprised to be on the bench because the guy hasn't played in so long and has had some pretty nasty ni injury niggles, uh, ends up playing 45 minutes after three days of training and about six months out, uh, having been out for a bit before that as well. Um, he was struggling afterwards. Um, 
uh, hopefully for fitness and he was sort of shaking his thigh so I'm really hoping that there's not any niggles there and it was just cramp and tiredness because uh, he needs to kind of preserve himself now because the start of next season won't be too far away um, but he did really well when he came on Christoph and um, it was good to see his physicality out there and he did he did well got in a lot of good blocks and uh, you know that I'm not going to talk about who Norwich have missed, but it was nice to see Christoph out there. So, of course, uh, Emmy Wendy, uh, Joseph Drimmich are both going to be missing. Tim Closer is going to be a, a big doubt um, uh, because of his hamstring. Hopefully, Christoph is okay. Uh, Alex Tetti came off with his fallen knee, which is a bit of a worry as well. Uh, Tom Heibel wasn't in the squad. I don't think he's here. I know that his wife is pregnant at the moment, so I don't know what's happening there. But uh, uh, I think, it, you know... Um, it's a, it's a tricky one for available bodies, really, going into uh, the last game of the season, which is at Manchester City. Um, if Norwich avoid losing 9-0 or more, I think I'd probably take it and then just run away. Just run away and then, fingers crossed, for whatever we get in the Championship, which, for me, you'd see a very different attitude from me at that point because we all know the level of judgment and analysis that's going to go into how Norwich turn 10 straight defeats, one goal since the restart, yeah, into a championship reaction that's really all we're all that's important now and that's all we're we're looking at um it'll be a very interesting summer summer stroke uh, pre-season that is for sure i don't think there's anything much else to say really um let's go home that's it for Cara road for this season i mean what well, i don't know i haven't got the words i haven't got the words um such a shame but then yeah, it goes for the rest of the year as well, doesn't it? 2020 as a whole. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we will move on quite swiftly. I'm sure there's something else I wanted to say, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna cut my losses. Keep. A... I remembered that was potentially the final game at Car Road in a Norwich shirt for for some of those players. Memorable. It wasn't that big a point, but I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd make it. Keep, uh, keep your eye on uh, The Athletic for whatever comes along <laughs> from my pen. And uh, thanks for your comments and questions. I'll make sure I check those out as we, as we move along. Uh, for wherever you're watching, however you support what I do, I really appreciate it. And uh, look after yourselves. Uh, hopefully see you after the game on Sunday up in Manchester. Gulp.